first off, I'm sorry we haven't had any trip videos lately. We haven't been on any trips lately. We're saving some money. We're planning some things. Uh, we've got uh, Mexico City's coming up soon, hopefully for us. Uh, and Amy's gonna be heading to Nashville. So we got a lot planned. Can't wait to get some cool videos about those places to show you guys. But in the meantime, we're looking at lots of different pieces of gear. And Zhiyun Tech actually reached out to us and sent us this new gimbal. So this is the Crane M2 gimbal. Uh, it's for smaller cameras, things like GoPros, things like phones, uh, point and shoots, and even like in this photo, it shows a small mirrorless camera. First, I'm gonna show you some stuff about the gimbal, uh, what comes with it, what the box looks like, all that kind of stuff. And then I'm gonna balance some different cameras on there so you can get a feel for what fits on here. Um, so let's get right to it. So retail package, there you go. Really exciting. So this is pretty cool though. Uh, I have opened this already, I hate to break it to you. It comes with some, uh, like a manual and stuff in here. That information will set all this stuff aside. But this is like one of those hard foam cases. It feels really nice. It is so small. I'm gonna show you this in comparison to my other gimbal later, but look how small this thing is. This is everything you need to run the gimbal. Ridiculous. So opening it up, it's hinged. It doesn't have a latch, but it's hinged. And there's everything. So this is the whole gimbal inside here and everything you need. Here's my iPhone 10, for example, like next to it. So you can see uh, the size. This isn't the plus, this is just the regular one, but compared to like the box and everything, you know, just to give you an idea. I know measurements are great, but like sometimes you want to see it with a real thing next to it. So here you go. So this gimbal, like I said, is for smaller cameras and everything. And that's why it is super tiny. It's cool that everything locks together. All the accesses, accesses, accesses. Not sure what that means. So first off, you have like this red switch here that releases your horizontal one. You can release all of them. Let's see, by releasing this guy, which slides this. Oh, the red one, and then everything kind of just falls open, like that. The gimbal is a gimbal where you cannot take out the batteries. That's a very important thing to note. This gimbal will run for, they say, seven hours. I haven't tested that yet, but typically with uh, Zhiyun and other, other brands, they've been pretty uh, accurate with how long the charge actually lasts, so should be fine there, but you can't change the batteries, so if you run out of charge, you run out of charge. It also comes with, which I love when they come with these, a small tripod mount on the bottom and you just boom and you've got it stable which is so nice also in here they've devised their own quick release system this is what the plate looks like it doesn't work with any other plates that i've found uh, i don't think it's any sort of uh, compatibility there but this slides in and everything's metal it's so nice feeling like that you, you can tighten it down and now that thing is locked, both with like a button release, so I can't pull it if this is tightened, and then it comes out. So this is the plate that will go on the bottom of your camera, and then you can put this on and off quickly and still hold all of your balance. So if you don't change your setup and you're just putting it in your bag, you can leave that plate on your camera, take it out, put it on, you're good to go. It's got a lot of like kind of memory features, things that are physical, but will help you remember the positioning of each uh, balance point. Okay, also comes with a really nice phone mount. I'm gonna use this thing even on my regular tripod at home. You just, you put the tripod right in here, phone goes on, this goes on there, good to go. We're gonna try this in a minute. And it comes with a big thumb screw for the bottom. This goes through the plate into the bottom of your camera and a wrist strap. So you can hook this on and you won't lose your gimbal. Cool. So this gimbal is seriously small. It is ridiculous, especially when it's all packed up and like locked into place and stuff. I mean, it's just, it's so tiny, it's crazy. Let me show you an example of what I've been carrying all around the world with me, which is my Moza Air gimbal. So this is the Moza Air, <laughs> okay? <laughs> to give you a size example here, look at how much bigger this thing is. Now it holds a lot more weight. It holds like, like six times the amount of weight. It holds over 3,200 grams. This holds 7,720 grams. So I don't know, I'm not a math guy, but yeah. Um, this one has a lot more features because it's newer. This one's older, things like that. But then let me throw it on a tripod. So this is on a tripod. Now let me put this one here. So seriously though, look at like the size difference here when it's on the tripod. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Obviously this one's overkill if you're using it with like a phone or something, but this has a huge payload capacity. It's over seven pounds it can carry. It's crazy. Uh, so if I get a bigger camera in the future, 
this thing's gonna be awesome for that but so it doesn't work in like every situation walking into places people are like what is that robocop looking thing when you're like getting all nuts with it and stuff it's crazy uh i love it but i have been looking for something super small so that's why i was so happy when zian sent this to us to review um and check out so we're gonna balance a whole bunch of different cameras on here and see how it does because i put my m50 which is on the very small scale for this gimbal but it's on the very end of the scale weight wise and size wise for this gimbal so i'm at both extremes as usual in life okay let's balance some stuff we're gonna start out with the smallest of the cameras i can't balance a gopro on here because i don't have a tripod adapter but i'm sure those will balance just fine we're gonna start with just a phone because I think that's gonna be one of the most common items that's gonna get balanced on this gimbal. We're gonna use this iPhone 10 right here with no case. <gasps> no case. Because I don't wanna do it all with this huge wallet case. It doesn't fit inside of that style clasp. So we're gonna need this guy and we're gonna speed this up so that you can just watch it happen. Just turn it on here. It is really windy right now, so. And there we go, we're on. And now we'll turn the camera on here. So, there you go, you can see it working. And that didn't take too long. I have pretty good motion. I can go all the way under sun like this. This is a good thing to note that you can do this. Not everything can fit in this mode. It's got pan follow, it's got all follow. See there, it hits a little bit. So if you go too far, too fast, you're gonna hit. Too fast, too furious, you're gonna hit. You can obviously adjust these motor speeds. Um, it does have the a few different features here. This is just all lock mode now. Now we'll hold it fully no matter what. The joystick still works during that as well, which is great. It's also got POV mode, so it's got the roll access. You can see how that rolls here. Get all the way. See if I go all the way upside down with this, does it work? It does. I can go all the way around. It's really cool. It's got obviously tilt and pan at the same time for POV. So POV is pretty cool. It's probably one of the smoothest I've seen on how it functions. Works really well with the phone. I don't, you know, I don't feel like it's too heavy for it or anything. This has a payload of 720 grams. An iPhone 10 weighs. And then it's got go mode too. I think I double tap for that. And then it's super fast. So for action mode. Cool. So that's a phone balance. That also shows you a couple of the features of how it moves around. You can also Bluetooth pair this to the phone. So you can start and stop recording right here and you can zoom in and out using this toggle switch on the side. Okay, so now we're gonna try it with this. This is an older camera. It's a Nikon S990, 9900. Uh, it's a great little camera, it shoots 1080, doesn't have a mic input, has decent stabilization, works okay in low light, not the best. There you go, quick review. But uh, we're gonna use it as the placeholder for a point and shoot. This camera weighs 290 grams. Uh, to give you an idea, the Canon M50 we're gonna try it weighs 390 grams. Once again, the payload capacity is 720 grams. So this is less than half of what this should carry. It should have no problem carrying this. Let's go ahead and try to balance it and go from there. We're gonna put it like this. See how that lines up. Okay, so here's our first problem. I haven't, I didn't look at this thing before we came out today. We don't use this camera too much. I'm gonna turn it off for now, but it has an offset tripod mount on the bottom. And when I line that up on this gimbal, they don't line up. So I don't know how you could really get this to work on this. It's probably not going to, there's really no option. You'd have to have, I guess you could get an extension plate and you could put it on, but that's something to note that you really gotta make sure that the distance between the middle here and your camera, like if you're, you need a camera basically with a center tripod mount. If it's on the left, it might not be close enough. Here's a better example so you can see what I'm talking about. See how that's not gonna line up? So I guess maybe they'll make an extension plate Zune, maybe that maybe you'll have one of those so that's a con if you have a camera like that so can't mount it bummer let's try an m50 on it first off i typically use these dq10 quick releases i tried to balance this with that on there it just was too much it was too cumbersome it kept hitting um so we're gonna mount it just directly using the normal so i'm gonna take off my quick release plate 
Now I can put the plate on like this. Plate's on, we're good. We'll slide this now on here. Cool. And we're gonna lock down that quick release plate with that so we know the camera's not gonna slide out. Release this access. Boom, we're good. Now we need a lot of balancing work to do here, right? Okay, cool, we're balanced. Good enough. This is how it's gonna be in real life. When you're standing there in front of the pyramids and you're like trying to do this fast, you're not gonna be insane. So, and this is kind of that consumer level, which is, this is how it's gonna be in real life. Flip it on and we're good. We got our pan, works fine. Now let me show you a couple of the issues. Number one, you can't go, oh, can you? You can, you can go under slung. There you go. Now you can't go too far, it's gonna tap obviously, but you can get to here. So you can get shots like this, following something. That's really nice. Can you go back? So you can't go very far uh, back, but you wouldn't really do that anyways. That's something you're not gonna do unless you're having it tilt. And if you have it tilt, it'll turn with it. It'll be fine. Just don't go crazy fast or speed up the motor and it probably will work okay. Let's try POV. This is where you can do the roll. So let's see if we can do the roll test all the way around with this camera or not. Nope, it tripped out that quick. So for POV, we can go like this. We can get cool, but see, as soon as I moved that, it's tapping the plate, because this plate has to be, it's so close that when I go, it's just, it's very easy, there it is, to, to tap. So you gotta really slow down or really speed up your motor, but that if you go too quick, those guys are gonna tap every time. So with a larger camera setup, you have to take a little bit more care in what you're doing, but I do think this gimbal can absolutely take this camera, no problem. But when I try that POV all the way around, it gets to there and it just, it can't, it just can't take that weight all the way around. Even though this is within the range, the gimbal says it can. So majority of it, I'd say 98% of it seems to be okay with a larger setup like this. So an A6400, 6300, all of those will probably be okay. Check all your weights though with the lens you're gonna use. So this is the 18 to 150. It's a lot larger of a lens. Uh, this one weighs 300 grams on its own. So plus the 390, we're at 690. The max payload for this gimbal is 720. So we're getting very close. If you added anything, a microphone or even, I don't know, anything at all, it'd be just too much. I haven't tried this with a microphone. I feel like it'll just be too cumbersome, but let's try it with this lens and see if I can get this to balance okay. 18 to 150, M50 on, so we wanna go about halfway. So you can see this one has a lot of change in zoom. So this is gonna be interesting to see if this gimbal can actually take any adjustments once it's balanced, especially being at the very end of its weight uh, capacity. So I'm gonna to go to about 70 and we're gonna try there because it's about halfway, like I said slide this on. So it's obviously going to be very front heavy to start. Look, it's like all over the place. This looks ridiculous, right? This probably is way too much for this, but we're going to try anyways. So first off, can we get it to balance this way? That means this is going to have to be all the way back. I'm sure. So you can't even do it. So if you go all the way back, the body of the camera is going to hit the gimbal like right there. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Dunk, dunk, dunk. And maybe we just can't be this zoomed in when we balance. So let's back it up. Let's go all the way back to give it a shot here. There we go, we're getting close now. Go back a little bit. Okay, so I got that balance. It's ridiculous, but we got it. Cool, that's good. We're gonna try it. We're gonna move it just a little bit left and right. Okay, we're pretty, pretty well balanced here, as you can see. Let's go and turn it on. Okay, we're up and running. We've got the 18 to 150 on the M50 on the Zoom Tech. M2 gimbal so it can be done if anybody has this lens now here's here's some of the issues so if you want to tilt it look I mean look at how close this is this is crazy close and if I tilt watch what happens it's gonna hit that eyepiece don't hit the eyepiece you can see it right there it gets all crazy if I go this way it hits the thumb screw so yes it can balance it but can it fit it you tell me let's try if i do uh pov mode because then it's going to give it the most ability to move around like so if i tilt i mean it's good it's working it's working so weight wise i think it's fine size wise i don't think it's fine i just don't think it can fit this large of a setup physically and be like that usable i mean it's all right. 
it's all right. Get in there. Now let's see what happens if I zoom it out. Is it gonna just lose everything? At 150, it's still balanced. It's having a hard time now. I mean, that's a big change in balance for this little gimbal at the end of its weight capacity to kind of overcome. Yeah, it's having a difficult time. It's not liking it. So today, I think the best option is gonna be, because one, I can't shoot with our point and shoot. The M50 works with the 11 to 22, so I could shoot with that, but I honestly think the most realistic, unless you have a good point and shoot, which I don't, the most realistic for me today is gonna be shooting with a phone. So I'm gonna try to shoot a little B-roll sequence. We're gonna walk around downtown San Juan, shoot a little bit with an iPhone. It also is the least conspicuous looking, so that's kind of cool. People don't trip when they see you. So I'm gonna throw my phone on there, rebalance it, and we're gonna go get some shots, and I'll tell you at the end what I think about it. Crane M2, it's an awesome gimbal, especially for the size, how it locks all tight. It's perfect for traveling. For point shoot cameras, I think this thing is amazing. Same for phones or for a action cam. For a mirrorless camera, I think it's a bit of a stretch. You can do it in a pinch, but I wouldn't want it to be my only gimbal for use with like a Canon M50. I would go with something a little bit larger. If you watched this whole video, thank you so much. Like and subscribe for more, and I will see you guys next time.